So let's think about this, all right? So the main thing, guys, is obviously, again, in this last problem, I gave you a polynomial and I said find the zeros. This problem is really saying I'm going to give you the zeros, find the polynomial, OK? So first thing we're going to do is we have the zeros. Let's set all the zeros equal to x, right? Because that's how we wrote them in that set notation. So we can say x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 1 fourth. Now what we want to do is we want to find the factor. Where did we get those zeros? Well, we got them because each of those, they came from factors that were set equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is just set them equal to 0. That's now the factor, right? That's the factor that x equals negative 3 came from. Agreed? Now the one thing you don't want to do is subtract a fraction on both sides. Because does anybody really want to multiply with fractions? No. Right? So the best thing to do here would just be use inverse operations. Multiply by 4, subtract 1. This is Ms. Levin. Yes. Could you send Gage to the office for checkout, please? OK. Thank you. So now, these are your two factors. Um, and now we can multiply them to provide us with the polynomial. But again, this is raised, is, has a multiplicity of 2, so we've got to make sure we raise that. Right? And again, x plus 3, guys, is x plus 3 times x plus 3. So we need to multiply that out. I'm sorry, I don't need to write that out. I can, multi I can expand binomials. This is a perfect square trinomial. I'm trying to get you guys to the same level. But hopefully you guys can maybe check my work if you need to multiply that out. Use FOIL, combine like terms. Yes? No? x plus 3 times x plus 3 x squared, 3x, 3x, plus 9. Yes? Hopefully, you'll be doing so many of these. By the end of the course, you'll be like, oh, OK, yeah, I'm getting there. Now, we need to multiply a trinomial times a binomial. Some of you might want to do box method. Some of you could probably do distributed property. Whatever, really, whatever you really want to do. Um, I'm just going to use, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use uh, distributed property. plus 60, 24x, minus 6x. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's squared. OK, and then I'll combine my like terms. Let's see, that's going to be a 23, right? 23x. That becomes a 30x. Agreed? Is everybody OK? Yes? Just go back behind. Is everybody OK with that? Oh, but hold on. Just, wait, just look at this one thing real quick. Are we done? We got the polynomial, right? You take the zeros, you find the factors, and you multiply them. Yeah. What's the problem? Leading coefficient. Crap. The leading coefficient is 4. We need to be 2. You could factor out an x, but that's, well, you can't factor out an x. How do we, go, how do we make 4 to equal to 2? Now, first of all, hold on, just real quick, hold on. If I, multiplied or if I multiplied this polynomial by a number by a scalar, does that change the zeros? Multiplying by a number only just stretches or compresses it, right? So is there a number that I can multiply by 4 to give me 2? One half. Very good. So just use this as a scalar. Now, obviously, um, not everything is divisible by 1 half. So this would be like a lot of fractions here. Like obviously you could rewrite that by distributing that always. But again, if you distributed that 1 half, would you now have a leading coefficient that's 2? Yes. That's it. OK? So and again, that's the important thing, guys. The scalar is not changing the polynomial. It's not changing.